Greetings. Today I'd like to do a quick look at the new UVC, so webcam to NDI adapter or converter, whatever you want to think of it as, from OBSBot. I don't know if that's how you say that right, but OBS Bot. OBS Bot is known for their little AI cameras that have tracking. Uh, they have a couple different ones and they are selling this with the intention of allowing their older ones that don't have NDI built in to do NDI. Obviously their more recent Tail Air has the option for NDI directly, but I think they've got a lot of webcams out there. Now, given that this does UVC and UVC is an open protocol or standard, this will actually work with a bunch of different cameras. I'm gonna be demonstrating it with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. The adapter, I'm not doing an unboxing, there's really nothing to the box. Comes with the adapter. It comes with I want to say probably a 1.5 meter USB-C to USB-C cable. And then they also give you a little adapter to go from USB-C to USB-A. The adapter itself can be powered via power over ethernet. It's also got an SD card slot so you can record directly in the adapter. And then on the other end, you've got a USB-C for power in if you're not able to deliver power over Ethernet. You've got a USB-A port. So again, if you were using, for example, the OBSBOT Tiny 2 with its remote, uh, you can connect the remote dongle to this, and then you can use the remote and still control the camera. In addition, you can also control the camera using NDI PTZ controls. And then the last port here is for connection to the camera itself. And then it also has a tally light on the top. It's got one quarter 20 screws on the bottom or on either edge side along with these heat vents. I have noticed that it does get a little toasty when it's been running. Not that you can't pick it up still, but you know, if you can leave it in an area with some ventilation, that's probably good. This device will do basically any UVC camera spec from 1.0 to 1.5. It will handle 720p, 1080p, even 4K. I don't have a camera that does 4K webcam to test it with, even though the Pocket 3 is a 4K camera when you're running it in webcam mode, it will only output 1080p. So I figure at this point, let's get it hooked up, take a look at the web interface for it, what you can configure, and then we will do a little bit of latency testing as well to see how quick it is. So I'm gonna switch over to the computer now. So I figured what I would do first is test the latency of the Pocket 3 as a webcam going straight into the computer. So I am recording this externally and I've got a slate here, and the slate will flash blue lights for a frame when it claps, and then also we'll be able to see the numbers on the screen as well to hopefully be able to count them. We'll have to load it into Resolve to actually count the frames for real, but here we go.
Now what I'm going to do is I am going to disconnect the camera from the computer and then I am going to plug it in to the tail air and then down here So now, using, still using Ecamm as the software, I have changed the input to the input coming from the Pocket 3 via the OBSBOT, and we're going to do our same clap tests. All right, here we have the video from the tail air loaded into Resolve. Unfortunately, reading the screen is a little difficult, but we can see the blue lights. So here we have the blue lights on the Betso firing. This is with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 connected directly to the computer. If we advance eight frames. You can now see the blue LEDs showed up on screen. So we're looking at eight frames of latency between real life and UVC going into the computer and being displayed by Ecamm Live. And we have a couple of those. So again, there, it's hard to see the blue light that time. Didn't really get caught by the tail air we can see that it freezes at 04. And when I go eight frames after the clap, even though we didn't really see the blue lights here, you can see the blue lights in the on screen. So it's basically eight frames delay for UVC. Get another one here. And again, it's eight frames. So now, this is, I switch it over to being connected through the OBSBOT and select the video. And so let's see if we can So there's the blue on the slate itself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so it's still eight frames when we see it coming through an ECAM via the OBSBOT. And here we go again. Here's our blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so it appears that it the OBSBOT itself is adding basically no additional latency over the UVC latency 
in itself, which is actually pretty impressive considering that it has to uh, re-encode the stream into H.265 because the UVC is probably coming in from the, the camera as MJPEG, motion JPEG. Possible it's doing H.264, but either way, it has to be re-encoding it. So that is actually quite impressive. I'm surprised by that. The other thing I'll point out is that when you do not have a webcam connected to the OBSBOT, you still get a feed from it. It is still sending out a 1080p 30 feed with the OBSBOT logo. There does not appear to be a way to change that logo, but at least you will know that your source is there and you don't have your camera, your UVC camera being picked up. All right. Now I am recording the screen of the computer itself, and you can see that we are looking at the OBSBOT. And we have audio coming from it. There's a lot of noise in this room, which is why you see it peaking up pretty high. I am not recording the computer audio, so you won't be able to see that. Um, external microphone, that's solid up because that's the time code coming into the computer. If we look at the web page, you can see that tally, you can turn the tally on and off. And right now, because the eCam is pointing at it, tally is on, but if I switch to a different input, so this is coming from the, obs the overhead, which is focused back a little bit, you can see that the red light has gone out. We'll switch back to here. You can see the outgoing NDI stream and also what the record stream would be. I don't have an SD card in here, so there's no recording, but you could kick off the recording from the web interface. I don't know if they have a way to do the recordings you know, via remote trigger, via API or whatnot. That might be nice. Under the network settings, not a lot here. It's set for DHCP. It's using the default public NDI group. If you wanted to change your NDI group, you could. And if you were going to do NDI multicast, you can also set that up here. In control, so one of the things that's kind of nice, and I mentioned this earlier, is that the adapter, if the endpoint, if the camera supports PTZ, it will actually do PTZ. That also works too. So for example, if I open up uh, NDI video monitor and select the adapter, I can open up PTZ control. And again, this is strips fully NDI controlling the camera. It does not appear to do presets, but I'm not sure if UVC actually does presets or not. And, but, you know, the, the important bit is that you can control it via NDI and it translates them into controls for UVC. Under media, you can select the frame rate. This is what it'll negotiate with the camera and it will also not do anything higher than the camera allows, right? So right now, this camera is set to 30 frames per second. If you had a camera that could do 60, it supports that. Here's the NDI stream. You can change the stream name. You can pick 
what resolution you want to set send again based on the maximum resolution supported by your camera you can choose whether you want it to send an h264 or h265 h265 gives you better quality of course but is also not supported by all receivers and then lastly you can select what you want the bitrate to be anywhere from 2 all the way up to 40. It's the same for both the NDI stream and the recording stream. Finally, under settings, you can change the name of the device. It defaults to the last six digits of the MAC address as its unique name. You can change the user in the, the language of the web interface, have it check for updates. This is obviously currently up to date, and then also reset to factory. So it seems to work pretty well. Uh, checking in the dashboard for my switch set to 40 megabit, I do see basically 40 megabits of traffic coming in on the port. It is a gigabit port, so if you needed to send to a couple of different NDI consumers, you should be able to do that without much issue. And then um, it pulls a little over 16 watts. It negotiates for 30 watts, and it will also charge the webcam or power the webcam. In this case, it is charging up the Pocket 3, which is actually now at 100%. And so you don't have to worry about your webcam dying. So that was a quick first look at the OBSBOT UVC to NDI adapter connected to a DJI Osmo Pocket 3. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. Thanks. Cheers.